Live from Beaconsfield, this is National 9 News with Peter Hitchener. Anxious families keep vigil while the delicate mission to rescue Todd Russell and Brant Webb continues. I just love him so much and I just can't wait for him to be back with us. Hope at last as a nation's prayers are answered. Oh. It was just meant to be! It was just... It's a miracle, that's what I say. It's, just, it's amazing, you know? Good evening and welcome to this special bulletin from Beaconsfield in northern Tasmania where the news that two miners are alive after almost a week trapped deep underground has brought hope and anxiety to this small community. The rescue effort that seemed almost futile a little over 12 hours ago continues tonight nearly a kilometre beneath my feet. The first priority is to deliver much needed food and water but authorities have cautioned that the pair might not be freed for at least another two days. Nick Johnston begins our coverage. Brant Webb and Todd Russell may be alive, but the painstaking operation to bring them to the surface is far from over. As locals looked on in anticipation after the euphoria of last night, rescue crews continued their around-the-clock efforts to reach the pair, but it may be 48 hours or even longer before the two men are freed. They're alive 925 metres beneath the surface, surrounded by collapsed rock. The first priority is to deliver sustenance through a narrow tube tunnelled into the earth. Rescuers will then continue to chip away inside what will eventually be the exit tunnel. There's 12 metres more to go of this rescue tunnel and that's where the hard rock is and it's, um, it's just amazingly extreme and complicated and difficult. We have still got a very dangerous and volatile situation. We're still a long way from getting the guys to surface but... Um, uh, the circumstances have improved dramatically over the, the past 24 hours. Nearly six days after an earth tremor triggered the massive rockfall that trapped the pair and claimed the life of mate Lee Knight, the survivors are in constant contact with the rescuers using a microphone. Both men have communicated with their families via messages passed on from those trying to save them. The operation remains intensive but delicate, with extra equipment brought in from around the state. While Brant Webb and Todd Russell are reported to be in good spirits, their ordeal is far from over. Conditions underground are said to be extremely hot and humid, as rescue crews work frantically to provide them with food and water. In the hours ahead, just waiting for a successful rescue, it is going to be incredibly uh, draining for everybody. Very hopeful, along with the rest of the Australian community, that they are going to be able to come to surface to tell their story and what it will be. In Beaconsfield, Nick Johnston, National 9 News. Well, among those closest to the rescue effort is Australian Workers' Union National Secretary Bill Shorten, who joins me now. Now, Bill, uh, what have you heard about the conditions facing the rescue team? This is ex the rescue is going to be extremely difficult. I know that we had the euphoria of the win last night, but what yeah. worries us, of course, is the, re is the return, is getting the blokes back up. This is hard rock. This is tough work. It's going to take more than two days, we guess. And how are the how are the men who are trapped? What's their what's their how are their spirits? Well, what is good is that they can actually communicate. They can be heard aloud. Yep. The other issue, though, is that um, getting them food is difficult. Getting yep. them water is difficult. Yep. I th that's going to take a lot longer than perhaps people first thought. Yes. However, there is still hope and a and plenty of that. Ah. I visited the families today. They'd rather be where they are today than where they were yesterday, not even knowing if their blokes were alive. Right. Bill, thank you very much for joining us. And the unlikely turn of events brought the people of Beaconsfield onto the streets last night, thanking God for what they describe as a miracle. But it was the families of the two trapped men who felt and expressed the greatest relief. James Talia with this report. Five days of slowly fading hope were stretching into another wretched night when the word came. Not only was the impossible possible, it was happening. The miners' families, indeed the whole town of Beaconsfield, were thrust into a new, unlikely, joyous reality. Mine officials ran to the homes of Brant Webb and Todd Russell to deliver the news to their wives and families. He was shaking, he grabbed her and, and he was crying and, and, and he said, they're alive, they're alive and the whole room exploded because and everyone come running in behind him like, what the hell's happened? And, and, and here he is and the whole room exploded with just joy. Suddenly, a bloke comes through the door in tears and we thought, what the heck has happened? Knew and he then he spat it out that 
they're alive. They're alive. We've nearly wrecked the house, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. Word spread quickly through the small town and brought the jubilant residents out onto the streets. We are strong, Edithville. We are strong. You think of Stuart Diver and that was a miracle and then you think of this and that's a bigger miracle. Well, God's prayers answered, bringing these men out. It's an absolute miracle. It's a miracle. They're tough men. They come from a tough town with tough families. Relatives made their way to the mine to see if they could learn more and make contact. All are aware that the task of getting their men back is still a difficult one, but there was no disguising the massive relief which came from knowing their chances suddenly had skyrocketed. It's been the longest five days of our entire life and uh, I just love him so much and I just can't wait for him to be back with us. Over the moon, it's been absolutely awesome hearing this news. Uh, we've been really holding tight this whole time. Give a big cuddle and kiss and bash him. And bash him. <laughs> Did they find your dad? Yep. You have to talk though. And are you happy about that, Liam? Yes. The big bugger always come back. He's he's a he's a he's a fighter. He, he wouldn't hold him down. James Talia, National Nine News. The families are now calling on their reserves of strength and unity to weather the anxiety of the next 48 hours. As Nick Coe discovered, cautious optimism has replaced the euphoria that swamped them last night. It's been a long wait and remains so. Todd Russell's family, as they've done for nearly a week, are sticking close. Only now, apprehension has been replaced by relief. Doc, I know what he'll say. What are you doing here? <laughs> Which is what he used to say when we'd come and visit. Oh, what are you doing here? Todd's son Trent visited the site this morning to thank rescuers. It's probably the first time the 11-year-old has smiled since Anzac Day. I sort of had a feeling of both that he could be OK and he could not be. What are you going to say to him when you talk to him? I don't know. <laughs> Todd's wife, Caroline, is still waiting to speak with her husband. Her father, Alan Bennett, was in the mine when it collapsed. He knew the odds of survival were slim. I knew when I heard where it was, all I thought of was Todd, the three boys, Todd, Brandt and Larry. Brandt Webb's parents have spoken with rescue crews, though as yet they've not been able to contact their son, who remains trapped in a cage with his workmate nearly a kilometre underground. Buoyed by the fact that if he's got this far, he's going to get as far as it takes to get back together again. Everyone's speculating on what, what they'd like. Wanna... Uh, a beer and a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> but despite the miraculous news, Thoughts here have also turned to the family of Larry Knight, the 44-year-old from Launceston who was killed instantly while operating the machine in which his two colleagues remain trapped. But Mr Knight's family, while devastated by their loss, have passed on their blessings to the Webbs and the Russells, the miracle of Beaconsfield uniting those lost so much with all who've prayed for survivors and brought relief to some who in the past seven days have lived through what they feared may have been their darkest hours. Have you thought about what you might say to him when he comes up? Oh, it's, I'm going to kick him, I reckon. I'll tell him. I'll not to clean his dog yards out him, I'll tell you. <laughs> in Beaconsfield, Nick Coe, National 9 News. And of course, the family of Larry Knight, who perished in the mine collapse, has not been forgotten. Late today, Mayor Barry Easter read a brief statement on their behalf. So on behalf of Larry's family, I would like to convey to everyone that they are very pleased to receive the good news that his mates are alive, and we hope the rescue effort continues safely for all concerned. The family is yet to confirm a date for Larry's funeral service, until such time that the rescue effort is concluded. They are very grateful for the help from everyone involved with the whole rescue operation. The family would like to thank everyone for their sincerity and understanding during this most unfortunate time. Federal opposition leader Kim Beasley has been accused of politicising the mine accident after claiming that occupational health and safety training has helped keep the two miners alive. His comments came as the Prime Minister wished rescuers the best of luck. More from Clint Stanaway. With Australians holding their breath as rescuers battle to reach the two miners, the Prime Minister has spoken for the nation. He's described as incredible the work being carried out by the specialist mine rescue teams.
We must all hope that the two men are safely brought to the surface and reunited with their loved ones. He's also praised the Beaconsfield community, saying it has shown incredible resilience and courage in maintaining its hope and determination over the past six days. Opposition leader Kim Beasley has also passed on his best wishes, but did so by claiming occupational health and safety training has helped Todd Russell and Brant Webb survive. It's this sort of activity, action, this sort of understanding which the Howard government wants to rip out of industrial relations laws. Workplace Relations Minister Kevin Andrews describing the comments as appalling given the circumstances. Mr Beasley ought to offer an abject apology uh, to the people of Australia for seeking to politicise uh, what has been a tragic accident where one man is dead as a uh, grieving family uh, and where two others are still trapped in that mine. The minister says the new workplace relations...